Please enjoy this feature presentation of the Crooked River Radio Network. This program is rated for all audiences. Buckeye Time is sponsored by CrookedRiverRadio.com. Crooked River Radio is an internet radio station that is live 24-7 playing top 40 hits from the 60s through the 80s. You can find us on Live 365, Simple Radio, Roku, Radio Garden, and even Alexa, as well as our website. Come on and join us on the Crooked River. Hello and welcome to Buckeye Time. I'm Eric. I'm Pat. Somewhere out here. Honest, we are. Uh, <laughs> so interesting fact it, uh, that I heard um, uh, while I was uh, waiting for you to come back. One, you sound a little low, Pat. I don't know why. I shouldn't. Okay. Now you don't. Okay. Um, Probably just because it wasn't up on a mic. Okay. That makes sense. Um, But it's National Anthem Day. And even a more interesting fact, the tune of our U.S. National Anthem, do you know the song... um, Th- that it's um, the tune of, like the tune of the national anthem. Do you know what that is actually? America the Beautiful, th- isn't it? No, it's actually a song called Anakion in Heaven. Oh, interesting. The Star Spangled Banner. It was an old British um, uh, pub song. Yeah, the old British pub songs. Yeah, I love them things. I've always loved pubs. <laughs> yeah, I just found that video on uh, Facebook. I'm like, wow, this is an interesting fact. Um, but anyway, I digress there. But um, so today we're going to talk... Um, I don't even remember everything I said we were going to talk. Oh, USFL, because that is uh, uh, coming soon, starting in April. Um, the MLB lockout and actually interesting media news to do with MLB. Um, and... A topic we kind of skim past in one of our past uh, episodes, the lack of respect that this younger generation has for their um, elders. Oh, but, you're going you're, you're going after my heart there, Eric. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I that's could all. On that for the whole hour. <laughs> well, that could be our. Um, topic that carries us let's get into the mlb um stuff but um then we'll get into the other uh the respect thing um but so the mlb and owners and players did not reach a cba agreement by 5 o'clock on Monday, or Tuesday, I forget. I know they extended it. I don't remember what day they extended it to. So that meant they, um, uh... I'm not laughing had, at you. My dogs are going nuts over here. Oh, no. This one can't get uh, up on the on the couch. You ought to see this. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you here. I, I got a little black dog that's a... She's a little hellion. 
Yeah. And if I got a black and white spotted one that's a couple of years older, and she kind of, they kind of just bug each other. Yeah. Although oh, yeah. The black and white one can't jump up on the couch. She, she just is getting too old for that. So the other one instigates her and starts knocking her around and everything. And then the other one gets mad and starts pawing her. And she runs and jumps up on the couch away from her and goes, la, na, 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 na. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> that's, that, that's hilarious. But, um... So now they're in a lockout, a CBA lockout. Um, personally, that's uh, I don't care because baseball drags on and on and on. You know, games could last five, six hours at the most because they don't have you know a clock like every other sport under the sun. Um, so, I'm, needless to say, good riddance baseball. Well, I'm not a fan. You, you're going to take in the, um, as far as baseball stuff con- is concerned, this is, players getting money is what this, what this whole ne- negotiation mm-hmm. thing is. They're mad because they're not getting the big, big enough piece of the pie is basically what that, what that strikes about. I don't blame the players' association because they, when any you have a union with any, um, any place that you work, your that union's going to get you a, they're going to represent you, not to to make them, you know, be able to roll over you or you to roll over them, but Mm -hmm. your wages for unionized places are going to be somewhere between a third and a half more than, than. what you'd normally get if you weren't unionized. And I can see with the amount of money that these these baseball teams are making and claiming that they make, I can see these mm-hmm. players wanting the money. I don't blame I them. mean, everything but retail, if you're talking about unions that make more uh, than... You have to realize that there are some unions that have been beaten down, beaten up, and everything else. Um, yeah. And, and that's one of them. One of the the two, or one of them in this local area, is probably the one you're working for, or I'm working with. Um, mm-hmm. Those it you you have to go back to the time of probably uh, when Lawson's was around. Well, Lawson's mm-hmm. actually started that trend that uh, started to just they tried to destroy the union. And they they tried to get rid of the union in their shop, and it didn't work. You know they they ended up going on strike, and they struck until the the company actually went bankrupt. Mm-hmm. And on the other hand, about that same time, along come the grocery workers, which is warehouse and whatever, and they start yeah. doing the, basically the same thing. And the union or the the company just said, "Well, we'll just hire scabs. We don't care." And you're not going to affect us that bad. And all of a sudden, they had to back off on most of their demands. If that wouldn't have happened, you guys would probably be making a, what an auto worker would be making right now. You know, and what? without the the help of the pandemic. Well, I I don't know what an auto worker makes, well, but that's like that's about thirty bucks an hour. Uh, I don't even think it should be that high, but at the same time. It should be more, I used to work for a big time retailer, um, I'm not going to say the name, um, but, but anyway, they're non-union, they, of course, right after I left, raised the wage up to 16 an hour, well, where I work now is union, and they're only making eleven fifty an hour, plus union dues. So I mean, the union, as you said, it is just the local grocery union is just beat down because if they weren't, we'd be making they'd be fighting for and we'd be making a lot more than we do. 
but well, the, the thing you have to realize too there is they've actually got a labor contract, and they can't really change the the uh, wages until the end of the contract. Mm-hmm. But that uh, what I'm seeing here, you guys probably aren't having a whole lot of problem with uh, with your uh, with keeping people, are you? Uh. It's not keeping people; it's getting people. Well, there you go. To... And the the what the reason these wages have went up like they have is the fact that they can't get anybody to work for any less. You know, you mm-hmm. you're not going to pay seven or eight dollars on this in this t- t- time and age right now, and expect somebody that's going to come in there and work for that. It's just not going to mm-hmm. happen. I you're, mean, you're, in, inflation with... has killed it. Yeah, I was just going to say, with inflation, you're not – somebody in their mid-20s li- or working off of 11 fi- – or living off of 11.50, you can't do that. 11.50 an hour, you can't do that. If you want to, you know, live on your own or, uh, you know, so you pay bills and stuff, you can't uh, – Support yourself. That's the word I'm looking for. Support yourself off of eleven fifty an hour. Yeah, that's not going to happen. And I agree it, with that. And you know, and it, that, what do you do about it, though? You get a second job or a third I'm job. I'm considering or that. Job? Yeah, I mean, I've been looking into that the past couple of days of trying to get a second job because, well. Plus, I'm about to probably get full time at the grocery store, but um, that won't do much. Maybe up to thirteen an hour, but other than that, I mean, that won't do much. That won't be a substantial amount uh, that I'd be getting unless I'm there for twenty plus years. Then I could make enough but that's not going to happen because the thing comes down to is what do you you know you could probably go to one of these places that's paying 25 bucks an hour Mm -hmm. and try to get a job there but I'll tell you the competition there is going to be steep because of the fact they're paying so much yeah this brings me to another topic you hear about this Crap! All the t- all the time that oh they're paying twenty five dollars an hour they're they're paying thirty bucks an hour over there and you know in the past two years the customer service has went to crap. <laughs> Just reading that yeah I know that place that you invited me into that uh, still good. yeah ironically I saw when I sent you the text of. Last night, about the respect topic, I had sent the text, then saw that post. I'm like, this post fits the exact reason. Or this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. So let's just transition into that. What you, what you've got, just in the last couple of couple of months, we'll take myself as a. As a, uh, um, as an example, we order out food all the time. I'm not going to deny that it's our usual for food order. Uh, two, three, four times a week. Sometimes we'll order from uh, uh, B, the breakfast place. Um, we'll order. I'm not going to name any of these because I don't. That's really not my point. Uh, we order from uh, yeah. uh, TB up there at the Circle, Mexican. Um, when the uh, I'm trying to think where else? Oh, we ordered from uh, over uh, the football the uh, sub shop. The sub shop, yeah. From uh, we ordered from them. They stole our money. And didn't want to give it back. 
They told us if we wanted it back, we had to go dispute it with the bank. And then they wrote my wife a uh, a, a letter, uh, an email saying, "Well, we checked our, we checked with our finance people, and that money was returned a minute after that had been taken in." Horse crap! We got the damn receipts to show it. It, it what well, you stole the damn money from us, and we had to go argue to get it back. Where in the exactly. hell is the customer service and customer care in these places anymore? Jesus, flipping cramony. You, how, do, how do these places stay in business? You saw that. Read. You saw cause... that thing the other night with the, with the uh, in that group about the yeah. uh, woman going and getting called racist. Boy, mm-hmm. that is that is real customer care there. I you mean, know, uh, I at uh, my job, one of my past jobs, I've been, you know called racist by customers but it's never true you know people are people don't understand what you know i just can't understand this myself to be honest i can't understand why these companies just plain don't care anymore and enough that you're going to take and rip your customer off they shorten i've had other places the tb that i mentioned they short you stuff constantly. The breakfast place, every time we order stuff down there, if she doesn't stand in line and check the damn stuff as it's coming out, we don't get it all. Where is your quality control, people? Where is this stuff? What where are where is this headed? For crying out loud, aren't you gonna aren't you there to serve people? Give me a break. Yeah. I mean the the respect, well, this falls into the topic that we'll just transition into now, but the respect from the younger generation isn't there. And my assumption is that person working that drive through window was somebody of the younger generation who doesn't want to work but it's stuck working. So, of course, they're going to take that out on the uh, uh, customers. So, you know, Do that's me a favor ridiculous. And see, if, see if we're showing up on Facebook. I'm not showing it. I'm oh, not okay. showing a notification from it. We were a minute ago. Oh, yeah, okay. I got it now. I want to make sure that we're getting getting through there. But I see it now. I'm going to start sharing it. Um, anyway, that this this just this topic just really gets me. I don't know where these people think that you know. Even when, at a corporate level, you know, if you're so poor or if you're so um so broke. That you can't, you have to rip your damn customers off, by or or so stupid you can't shut your damn your damn uh, intake, your order intake off during a you know off on the internet. You're so dumb as far as your website's concerned. You know you shouldn't be in business, and yet no. constantly, oh this uh, get this foot long and get that foot long and. And get this for this much money. And I realize that the place I'm thinking I've, I've, I've dealt with has been having problems for a long time. This, this isn't the first round of this for them. And you know, their website proves it. You, you can go on to their website and you wouldn't believe this, the amount of complaints that's on there. And they don't do anything about it. They don't even respond to it anymore. You know, I, I accused them uh, on their website of of uh, fraud because that's what it was. Yeah, exactly. And they don't care. It, and that's the sad part. It, like we have talked about on countless shows, it's all about the money. No matter how they get it, honestly, ethical, dishonestly, unethical, however you want to put it, They'll cut corners 
and still get their money. So, unfortunately, that's the truth, but that is, you know, It's just a damn shame. It really is. It's a shame that these places aren't... If I owned a business, my this, which I kind of do here, I cater to people. If somebody was to call and say, hey, can you play this uh, this song at uh, this time of the day for me one time? Sure. Mm-hmm. If somebody wanted to, uh, said, oh, we, we'd like to advertise with you, but uh, we really ain't, ain't uh, we're really questioning as far as if it's going to be worth it for us. Can you give us a free month? I might think about that. You know, as as far as stuff like that, I don't have a problem with trusting. And, you know, if it don't work, I understand it as long as you talk to me. But mm-hmm. for me to take and, and try to to um, put up something that is going to say, or I'm going to take and supply you a service, and then me not... Me either get the service wrong, or get the, uh, or taken. Um, what do I want to say here? Taken supply a service that's completely opposite with what you wanted, and take your money and say say, say I'm not gonna gonna give it back to you. That's wrong. And it's, yeah, it's unethical. Which these comp, not all companies, but a lot of these companies are. It's all about cutting corners to get the money it uh, comes back to the money when it comes down to it there is you have you have one course or one one recourse in order to, to to fix that and that is not to visit that person or visit that uh, particular Company. establishment uh, don't visit them again but there again that's not fair either because you're the one that's out you're the one that wanted the service to begin with. And you probably went there because you liked them. Yeah, you know, I just don't know where it ends, Eric. I really don't. I I don't know. I mean, the thing is, t- taking your business to somewhere else, like if there's another sub shop, in, for example, near you, that you know you haven't tried and then you find out you like, then go there. Well... Uh, this actually did kind of turn into something similar to that. A week after all that stuff happened with that that one place, we ended up, uh, in fact, we talked about it here on, on the uh, Sunday show. We ended up getting a, going to this place called the Italian Garden. It's over there off of, uh, uh, it's over here, over near, near my house here. And we don't, they're not a sponsor here yet. Uh, <laughs> thought about reaching right. out to them. But then, I was going to say, it sounds like uh, we actually we... got uh, we've actually got um, some pretty good food there. Their their meatloaf sandwich was, or their their meatloaf sub was okay. It was okay. It wasn't nothing to write home about. But I had one of their chili or their uh, Philadelphia Philadelphia cheesesteak wraps. Oh my. God, was that thing good. So it would be enough. I'd advertise for them. And mm-hmm. I'd, I'd give them a free plug here, even though they really aren't friend to show or anything like that. Yeah, hey. But, yeah. This, you talking about them now might get them to you be like, know, hey. You never know, they might be listening. Who, who, whoever knows who's listening here. Yeah. Well, we who do knows? have a big enough reach. I checked the uh, statistics. This afternoon, we're hitting somewhere, about a thousand listeners, somewhere in there. And um, not, you know, there's a thousand people that have tuned into us, let's put it that way, at one time or another. That doesn't mean we have the, everybody listening like that at the moment. That's not, that's just not going to happen. But, you know, our reach is about 1,000, 1,300, 1,400 people. A and month. A month. That's... Yeah, just to that's clarify the, that. That's the reach. That's not what we actually hit. We're actually hitting somewhere about uh, 13 or 4, well, actually 14, 1,400 hours a month in listeners, which isn't bad, you know. Mm-hmm. And it, uh, that's actually 
discounting the uh, robots that we get, which you know, that, that was a sizable amount, and I'd cut that completely out if I could. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we're growing. I think that's a whole Yeah. Thing. Plus, putting these podcasts... By the way, you could catch us uh, if you're listening on Facebook and ha- have to leave halfway through the show or something and want to listen to us the whole show or any of our past shows or any other shows on Crooked River, you can catch us on Spreaker, uh, Amazon Music, um, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Yep. Yep. So and all the you ships, can always and all you the can ships catch us anytime there. And all the ships at sea. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um, we'll get into spinning off the customer service topic. Um, uh, to just the respect uh thing, of this generation just not having respect for their elders. You know, I would see it in school all the time uh, when I was in school and that was seven years ago but even just working in a store um, I've noticed how disrespectful this younger generation are to the workers well not like the older some uh, older generation aren't but more than uh, the older generation, the younger generation are just so rude to uh the employees, and I see how disrespectful they are to their, you know, parents. I mean, just back when I was in school, there'd be kids that would be cussing out every adult that was, whether it was a teacher, administrator school resource officer, custodian, any any adult. Do you know I, do you do you know this is going to going to show you the difference between your generation and mine. If, you know how many times that I cussed at my mother? Zero because you would have got smacked one, upside the head. One time I was 23 years old. I can remember this like it was yesterday. I cussed her and I I said the the F word around her once. She threatened mm-hmm. at that time she threatened to wash my mouth out with soap. And that mm-hmm. uh she 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 was a, a woman of very few words and you had, she always had an open communication line with me. And mm-hmm. you know, so I you know, we'd normally talk things over quietly, but I never if I cussed at my mother when I was young like that, my butt would be warm. I wouldn't be able to sit for a week. And that's what I think a lot of these kids need. But I'm not, don't get me wrong, I'm not one to promote violence. But no. I, I am one to promote respect. You, you guys have pretty much met my children, all three of them. They're respectful. They knew that they... When they were being raised, they knew their place. They still do, for the most part. And I mean, and I know you have a religious background, not to bring too much religion in here, but as the Bible says, spare the rod, spoil the child. You know? Yeah. So, you know, you don't punish your kids. They're going to, you know, be spoiled, walk all over The thing of it is, you had to. With me and the situation I was in back then, I had to take and uh, be, be be really careful with the way I was raising them because of mm-hmm. the fact I wasn't around them all the time. And that, that I had to raise my kids to be smart with what little time I had with them. And I, th- I think now I did a pretty good job. Their mother helped in some aspects. I wouldn't... Uh, Give her a ton of credit, but you know she did have the she did have the kids and helped raise them. But as far as the respect a- angle of it, even now, if I give my kids joke about this all the time, 
But if I was to give one of them the dad look, <laughs> yes, sir. What can I do for you, sir? <laughs> yeah, because they know. They know you taught them respect. I mean, and that's what a lot of these kids are missing today. And uh, this goes into a whole nother thing that the whole single family home or single parent home and, you know, the one parent working two or three jobs and unfortunately doesn't have time for the kid. So the kid's out doing stuff, you know, without any parental guidance or being home alone all the time because the parent is working, trying to raise them, trying to do what they can to, um, you know, get the, give the kid the best life they can. Yeah, and that, that was a whole thing, too. Was, and you, if my kids needed shoes, even though I was paying support and whatever, then my kids got shoes, my kids got socks. I used to get so mad because I'd give their money or the other parents so much money and they shit the kids would come over with holy socks and I'd take and rip the damn things off their feet and rip them into shreds and go get them a, go get them other pairs just mm-hmm. to demonstrate that that wasn't the way you were supposed to live I never you know these kids today walk around with these flipping holes in their jeans yeah th- that's the afraid. style now yeah that's the style Makes you look like you're out of the 30s. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all you I, need, I don't all you need is a rope for a belt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. God, do I sound well, like my mother? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> all you need is a rope for a belt. You look right, look like you come out of the 1930s. <laughs> yeah, but, all them but, holes in your jeans and all that. Sheesh. what's this world coming to? <laughs> well, but you're right. It's just these. There's no. These kids have no structure. Getting back to the generation thing, um, these kids have no structure, and they have the attitude. It either it's all about them, and or. Uh, another problem I have with this generation is the whole um, thinking these kids thinking they're better than every like some kids thinking they're better than everybody. Yeah, that's been every generation, but I feel like egotism and partially narcissism, which we could really get into that another show, is higher nowadays than the. Uh, or maybe it's just because it's more known about than in the past. Like, I feel like there's a lot more of the a higher population of the narcissistic type out there have than you, there's uh, ever been. Have you been? Do you watch much TV? A little bit. Have you seen any of the, the recent political commercials? Uh, no, I tend to just watch The Simpsons and Family there Guy. Is a, and, there, uh, there is a couple that you should, when they're on, you should take and watch the, uh, uh, the 11, 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock news and just watch the political commercials that come on there. It's eye opening, Eric. It really is. These, some of these politicians don't feel that they've got enough, enough of their own, uh, backing. To not so ride had, on the con, ride on the sh- shirt tails of a of a past politician. Uh, oh yeah, you know he, well of a past you know of a past president. I think I know who you're talking about from our state. Yeah, there's yeah, that's what I I'm know who about. she is. The, the lady yeah. is, and there and I I used to really like Josh Mandel. But mm-hmm. he comes on and his last, the last, uh, um, the last words of his, his advertisement. Every time I see that, I think, why in the hell are you trying to write on that guy's coattails? Trump, or, uh, America proud, 
blah 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 proud trump yeah. proud yeah yeah you know, why you why do these people feel that they have to write on a, the coattails of old politicians but i mean yeah i'd never I, do that if i the, could, if i couldn't run if i ran for an office and my, my head said just come unplugged if i was run, gonna run for an office i'd i'd want to want to run on the on the fact that uh, I've done something, or what I want to do, I I would state my own ideas, and I'd mm -hmm. state my own uh, my own policies, and I'd say that you know I've done this in the past, and I wouldn't sit there and say I've done this and I've supported so and so and so and so, and we don't care if you like it or not. I I'm supporting them, and it's you know this other one that's on here. He keeps talking about building a wall. Yeah, mm -hmm. Walls, old news. Why? <laughs> you know, why? I mean, yeah. Well, are you talking about he that person's for building the wall? Or... Yeah, he's for building the wall. He hasn't given up on the wall yet. I mean, I agree with him, but you need to stop he needs to stop as in you he needs to stop pushing that but i agree that has to be built which it's not possible even you can now that that is a, a political subject i don't really want to get into as yeah. far as if it's okay. needed or it, it's just riding on the coattails of somebody else instead of yeah. coming up with your own damned ideas that's the whole yeah. thing. Give me some fresh ideas, stuff that you want to do that's going to make me want to vote for you. Don't sit there and tell me about the a past politician and his his old ideas. Come up with something new for Christ's sake. I mean, I think we just need to flush out all these politicians and well, that's have when non-politicians. When run. forty, what was it? For, what is it? Forty-five. When forty-five was in there. That was one of the things I liked about him. I liked the idea of draining the swamp. But mm -hmm. when you, he drained the swamp, it just brought in ten, ten, more time, 10 times more that was just as corrupt or more corrupt than the other ones. So what, what the hell sense does that make? But he didn't, he didn't have time. Uh, he didn't have enough time to fully drain that swamp. But... I feel like we need somebody to drain the swamp, but somebody who doesn't have as big of a mouth. Like, he couldn't keep his mouth shut and, like, quiet on social media. It's, it's that so was... nice to not have that on social media anymore or any of the, tw any of the tweets. I've gotten so used to that now. <laughs> and again, uh, he's... Well, the thing well, is, he started his thing. own. What well, the the express the the opinions that I'm expressing here are are my own. I'm not. Yeah. They don't tie into my radio station. They don't don't tie tie into my uh, any of my hosts or anything like that. These are my ideas. If you want mm -hmm. to discuss them, you know, you may or may may not be able to because I may or may not want to. But these are my opinions, and I'm, I'm a. Entitled to express my own opinions, just like anybody but else is. I, I think, uh, maybe I'm wrong here, I think we both agree we need a non-politician he here who is less explosive than the non-politician who was in office. And I use uh, figuratively Pers the word explosive. Personally, I don't know if that's going to be enough. I think personally, if it was up to me, I'd like to see the parties change. I'd like to see it switch from this two-party Democrat-Republican thing. I don't know how that would come about or how it would work. But the idea of these two parties, one fighting each other, and then when the roles change, the, the other fights the other one and, uh, and talks about politics that are 30 years old that the other one did. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know that that's ever going to work out like that. 
But, I mean, unfortunately... I'd like to see a third-party candidate win sometime. Yeah. I mean, if they got rid of the parties, what would you do, though? Like, you, it, it's not going to be a, turn into a socialist country. How else would you do it? Well, that's, what? that's the $64 question. And I, so, don't, I don't know how that how that would even work out, but I know on one thing I'm just a lot of people and as I have expressed this in different groups I've been in, seeing what this is, seeing the way it all works, there needs to be some changes somehow to to where the dishonesty comes out of the politics. Mm-hmm. I agree. It it's all just it's not promoting what you have done. For the good, it's putting down the other person, and, and that we thing, don't. That's what they think's going to get them elected. Yeah, we're, we're I not don't even close that. to some of that yet. Wait till you get into the November and the, the governor the primaries midterms. and stuff. The midterm primaries, or the and the midterm elections, I can hardly wait to see what they're going to do with the Ohio governor. Mm-hmm. And I can hardly wait to see how some of these uh, uh, Trumpites are going to act when uh, when it when their people don't get elected or or even come close. I don't know. I, like I said, I'm not one to be. I hate politics. I've hated politics my whole life. I've run in some club politics myself, not by my own liking. I don't like it. Mm-hmm. I feel that I can do a job. That's why I did what I did when I got elected for in this club. But, you know, I'm not saying I'm the only one that could do it. I'm not. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think, especially for economy and business, I will say there was a lot, there's a lot of stuff I won't, uh, like, I supported former president. Okay, whatever. But I think he did really good with the economy and bringing jobs back to America. And that's what, if that would have continued on that trend, I wouldn't have had an issue with him. But he had to go getting himself corrupted. And that, that just screwed it. Well, plus you had the coronavirus come in. Right at the end, too. That I'm not sure that affected him that much. Well, I I feel like it did only because people the all the non-essential uh, businesses were being shut down, so that killed the economy. Yeah. How, how would that thing, not have killed the economy? The thing of it is, you had all that other money influxed. You had the stimulus and all that, and that that really didn't hurt us. That that spurred it more than anything else. Mm-hmm. Hell, if it would have been, if there would have been no stimulus money, I would have not. I would have not probably worked half the time that uh, that that was all happening. But I I delivered car parts every day, five days a week. I took and delivered uh, medical stuff five days a week. I could have had more if I wanted, but I didn't. What it what it came down to is, you know, I don't think the economy was that was in that bad a condition because of the stimulus monies. Mm. I know I spent my share of them. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe the the stimulus money kept it going, but it didn't help the jobless rate. I guess is what I'm talking. Uh, when I think of the economy, I'm thinking of the jobless rate. Well, as and, far as the jobless uh, rate goes, you had uh, and you had places that that can't find, still to this day can't find help. But uh, like there, where I work. But there again, look at these particular operations and see what they're paying. People aren't mm-hmm. going to do menial jobs like that and get menial P- pay. People want to, uh, would rather 
work for DoorDash or places like or Uber or anything like that. Yes, I'm not plugging them. I'm just saying because they could set their own hours. They could decide if they want to work that day or not. If they want to work 18 hours one day and not work the next day or work two hours the next day, they can. You know, that that's what people want to do. They want to set their own schedule. They want to be independent contractors. Nowadays, that's how things work, or that's how people think. They, oh, I could just be an independent contractor and, uh, you know, set my own hours and work when I want and not have to work when I don't. That's not how it works. Yep. But, you know, this... But there again, yeah. that's, the way this, that's the way this is all going. I mean, look at the changes you've had since the pandemic started mm -hmm. two years ago now. Used to be that you hardly had anybody that was work from home. And most of the work from home jobs were all scams. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you wanted to, now, hell, everybody's working from home. <clears throat> the uh, employers actually are, are saving money because of that. They don't have to have the, the type of facilities that, that they uh, had to have before the pandemic. You know, so therefore you're saving money on rent. You're saving leasing money. You're saving employees don't have to leave their house so they're not, you know, the gas use is down. You know, there's a million and one things that have happened since that pandemic started that have really been savers. Hell, my, yeah. wife, lo my wife loves working from home. She, she takes and uh, it gives her a chance to, to stay with me, <laughs> feel sorry for her there. Yeah, I was just gonna say, is that a good thing for her? <laughs> but the the thing of it is, she she can fix, get up and fix her own lunch. She she wants to get up and walk around the house for a minute. She can get up and do that, and you know she's she's gonna thrive with whatever she's doing. If she was in an office situation, I don't know where that would be. I I don't. I'm sure she would uh, still be the breadwinning person that she is, but it may she may not thrive as much as she is living her living and working from home. Plus, it's a fact she doesn't have to get up in the on the middle in the middle of January, get up in a snowstorm and travel to Canton. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's just the convenience, like. I, well, because it comes down to these. some of these employers want to be able to watch their employees and make sure they're not goofing off. It's like the kids and... But there's when, still ways to do that, Eric. There's, you know, and I don't mind these a bit. You have uh, keystroke recorders and stuff like that, and these companies are using them. Because I've seen them, I've seen it on a machine she's got. They're not ever coming on mine. They won't. Yeah. I won't ever connect my network to them. But mm -hmm. you know that they can tell when she's not busy and when she is. She moves her mouse around. That's a sign she's busy. You know, if she's if she's in her web browser and they see the the, the browsing history coming up, they they know she's there. She they know she's doing something. You know, the whole thing of it is they never really realized when all this started happening what was actually going to happen. Mm -hmm. you know, they didn't realize what was available to them. Look at how Skype itself, the program we're on right now, or uh, Zoom. Zoom, well, yeah. Look at how Zoom has, has taken off in the last two years. I mean... Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's just, either it's that good. or Microsoft Teams. Nobody had heard of Microsoft Teams till this pandemic hit. Yep, and you know the the stuff explodes, and the, of course, Zoom was actually probably pretty ready for it. They, yeah, they were a fairly new uh, program, but they they sure 
they they developed in a hurry and really got it to got it working well. And oh yeah. Two years ago, we uh, we never even heard of the word Zoom. I had heard of it, but I didn't know I knew how Microsoft convenient. Teams. I I knew uh, Teams, and I knew some of the other stuff, but I'm not, I I would have never thought. I know. I used to be on Pal Talk. Pal Talk was a cool program, similar to what Zoom is, except mm. you were in groups, and it uh, that that was pretty cool because it had video to it. I but if you would have told me at that time, wait till they bring out Zoom. I yeah, would, you'd be not, like, what is Zoom? <laughs> well, I never believed it. But that it, is, it is what it is. And people don't it, like people think in order to host a podcast that just taking what we do, for example, that you have to be in the same room as the person that you're hosting with and, you know, be, you know, broadcasting from the same room and everything. You don't, you know, when, you can, when I first well, started into podcasting, I used to like having people come into the, come in and sit down here and you could talk face to face with them. But even like right now, we, you and I work off each other. There's a little bit of a, a um, miscommunication i don't know why i want to call it that but there's a sometimes you have to pause a little bit to let me finish and i have to do the same thing but i you know we can work off each other that way the scripts can can go on that way and whatever i i mean i don't feel like that's a delay but i think uh, i don't know if you notice that when you're doing you know the other podcast with Jerry that, you know, there's a delay or whatever to wait for Jerry each other and I to work finish. really well together just because of the, we're both pretty informed on the topic that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. You know, like a, a or, show like this is kind of tough to do because there's no real, real set topics. Yeah. You know, we decide mm-hmm. Jerry and I decide the day, the day of the show, what we're going to talk about. And he kind of fills me in on uh, where I'm going to talk about this and this and that. Like last mm-hmm. week, last week we were talked about tube radios and building radios. So I, I've got my own expertise in this, and so does he. And that made it a pretty, pretty worthwhile show. You know, we talked about how to build them. We talked about how to make them work, how to, you know, what bands to put them on and stuff like that. You know, we kind of worked off each other like that. And that, that's the, the way some of these podcasts need to do. It's yeah. really tough to do a thing like we do on Sunday night. Yeah. Even, even though there are some topics, it's really kind of tough because you never know who's going to be in there and you never know who's going to say what. Even I mean, I, I think we, the best show that we ever did was um, when Dale Justine's husband joined us uh that one time and uh it was kind of open topic but we had like really good debate that was probably the best debate that we ever had and it was the debating the debating could be a a a pretty big turn on for for your uh client or for your listeners too but, mm-hmm. but there again, you have to watch how far it goes. Yeah, I got tired yeah. of those political shows like that that we did back when the pen, pandemic and all that started. I really yeah. got tired of the politics pretty quickly. I'm not a political person; never have been, never will be. I have my own ideas. I know what I like. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you can have your opinion too. Don't matter. I'm not going to sit here and tell you my way or the highway. That ain't happening. By the way, Eric, it's my way or the highway. <laughs> eh, maybe. <laughs> oh, no. I wouldn't bet on that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing with you. You know that. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I know. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, it's... But, but, like, Zoom has made it so 
well, it's made it possible, like for the Sunday show, for all of us to be able to join no matter where we're at. Because yeah. you could get it on your phone. Like, you know, Justine was from Disney World or Disney whatever. World, yeah, I talked, I've talked to her a couple of times since then. Dale, so, Dale being out there in uh, in Missouri. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uranus. Yeah, yeah that was <laughs> that was one of our best segments ever. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's the miracle of the Internet and stuff like that now. How, do, could we have done that two years ago? Nope. Wouldn't happen. Well, well maybe we could have, but we... Uh, if we would have known about Zoom, but if we didn't know about Zoom, well, even when you and I first started getting into the other radio station on that, we had yeah. cap- we had some capabilities there, but the, even with doing remotes and stuff like that, that was almost archaic. Look at how far that's come nowadays. I could mm-hmm. take and I've got this uh, software on my laptop. I could take and go somewhere. And uh, somewhere out of here, or go to a remote, set up the laptop, set up a camera or two or whatever. Come in here on on the uh, I I run VNC. Mm-hmm. I could come in here and turn the VNC or the uh, the station transmitter off here and transmit from wherever I'm at. Complete the show, record it, and everything else. Turn it back off. Come back over here. Turn it back on, and we're done. You uh, do you not use Radio Boss anymore? Oh yeah, I use Radio Boss. Okay. That, that would that's turning that's kind of turning the transmitter off, or okay. you know taking and putting it into the mode where we are now. It takes a lot to do this. I wish they'd automate some of it. Mm-hmm. I keep threatening I'm going to do a a video to show what I actually go through to try to start these shows up. It takes about probably fifteen to twenty minutes to set it set it up from scratch. Mm-hmm. I've <laughs> I've watched him do it, me. and I see how aggravating it is for you sometimes, uh, or all the time. I'm gonna I'm in the process of thinning some stuff out. We actually are on uh, FC two now, which is broadcasting two. All right. If you're an FC2 listener, welcome. Good to have you, and uh, thanks for listening and watching. But, you know, it, it all comes down to the fact that it's, you know, we've come a long way. As far as the respect stuff goes, I even in podcasts, you got to respect each other. Oh, yeah. And, and I, you don't burn, I think we do a great job at that. You don't burn any bridges. The other place taught me that. I'm where I could have very easily uh, burnt some bridges over there. I still have some, and I prefer it that way. I think, unfortunately for me, I burnt all the bridges over there, plus with the person who actually brought me over there, or got me um, brought on staff over there. But that was for a different reason. I burnt bridges with him. And that's why he's no longer a part of the Sunday night crew, because he was he would join every once in a while. But yeah. I kind of burnt those bridges, and he's never coming back. But anyway, yeah, you live and learn. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a story to be told off the air, though. Um. But, yeah, I've learned a lot through um, podcasting, though. You know, um, my biggest thing, and I still struggle, um, and we've talked about this before, of not my, me not being able to tell when somebody is, like, done talking or wrapping up what they're saying and maybe, you know, cutting in a second too early. And that's why I'm, like, I, I'm 
afraid like I annoy people because I don't try to do it. It's just I can't tell the small um, like pauses that somebody makes while talking like to take a breath or whatever where I can cut in. And like I said, we've talked about this. Well, you, in order to do some of that, you just have to use patience. I've told you that before. It mm-hmm. takes patience in order to do some of this stuff. And you know, you'll get there. And Rome wasn't built in a day, and we're all still learning. This whole thing mm-hmm. for me has been a tremendous learning curve as far as um, our podcast and everything else. There's stuff that mm-hmm. I've done in the past where I think, what in the hell did I ever do with that? Why? And yeah. then there's stuff that, you know, was pretty cool. Uh, and for what, it's good for what to this, have a men. It's good to have a mentor. For what cause... this is, for what this is, uh, um, I don't mean to sound like I'm complaining or anything, but for what this has cost me, I've had a hell of a time with it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, I, oh yeah, I have fun with this. If I didn't have fun, it wouldn't be here. Then you got exactly. people like people like Ellie out there, and that uh, mm-hmm. tune in to, to just to because they're curious as to what you're saying about them, <laughs> right, Al? I know you're listening out there somewhere. <laughs> and I'm, I'm waiting for the text. <laughs> mm-hmm. And any of my friends, if you're listening. I uh, yeah, this, this, I started into this stuff for fun, mm-hmm. and I've had a blast doing it. Anyway, we're off to- topic completely. What are we going? What else are we going to talk about? Um, we could talk about the USFL a, a little bit. Um, so new football league starting, um, called the USFL, <laughs> which was originally started back in the eighties, but I I really hope it's successful because I think it would be a nice little fill in um uh, during the off time of the NFL. I just got told to bite me. <laughs> what? I knew that was coming. Like Ellie. I had yeah. I knew. Yeah, I had a feeling that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, US <laughs> USFL. Oh, uh on a side note, hi Justine. Oh, Justine's in too? Cool. Yep. Anyway, getting to uh the USFL. She said she li- she likes the show. This is one of our best shows ever. Oh, cool. Thank you. So, Justine, if you want to, if you're still listening, if you want to uh jump in and uh, respond to any of our topics prior to this. You know how uh, to get here. You can. You you know it's same link for Sunday. Anyway, um, USFL wise, I don't know if it's um, they're going to have to take and make it similar to what normal football is in order for anybody to really enjoy it. Mm-hmm. But people won't because it's not NFL. They. People won't watch it. And uh, I, just, I think that's Justine kind of... Justine said she can't. I kind of think that that's the issue, too. I think that um, you're going to get a whole different brand of people watching spring mm-hmm. sports as, than you do in the fall. Most of the fall stuff, as far as football is concerned, your weather's crappy anyway. Once you start getting out of the crap and getting... Uh, you know, into the spring, people, there's just not, not going to be people there to watch the, as much as you would if they were, uh, you know, if it was a fall sport. True. Yeah, you know, But even though, then again, if you got football fans, football is football, you know, so you can get. You'll get, you'll get um, some from that, yeah. But there again, it's going to depend on what what it looks like as far as the uh, um comparison to 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 the uh, NFL and whatever. Mm. If they can sustain, I could see Canton getting a team 
because they're already doing their conference championships and uh, league championship I game mean, when you go back in Canton. When you go back into history, as far as uh, was it the World Football League? There was one of them that came on that actually brought a new um, style of camera onto the scene. Do you remember that? If was you... it uh, NFL Europe? No, I th it was. It might have been Canada. They brought that. Uh, they actually got a, a wire that's strung across the stadiums now. Yes. And I think it was a World Football League that started that. And that cam is so annoying to watch. If you what? ever watched the final four games for college uh, football, they have ESPN has their four networks of different um, broadcasts you can watch. Not promoting them, but just saying. Um, and one of the games is that cam, and it is so shaky and hard that's to not focus. What that's not what it's there for, though. What it's there for is, the, is as the play is progressing. They, they switch to that quite a bit, and stabilizers and everything else on that thing are, uh, are what you see on the final picture. You know, that's so that you're getting coverage of the plays without having for two people to run down there and try to get it from the air, you know, try to hold the camera up high enough that you can see it. I think that that was a marvelous invention, whoever came up with that. Mm -hmm. and, and they had the Arena Football League that was around for a little while. Isn't the Arena still around? Uh, it might be. I don't think there's the much there, though. Yeah. It probably, the pandemic probably put it out of business operation, whatever you want to say. Yeah. But um, I think if they could put good quality enough um, product on the field, and that's a problem too, um, with these, you know, you had the AAF, you had the XFL. The XFL is trying to start up again under different, leadership with uh the rock leading it but it takes a lot of money yeah and and if these, these places can't sustain it with the amount of money it's going to take they're not going to survive it mm -hmm. uh, it's sad because i think some of these places especially the xfl or the aaf they might have had enough money but the pandemic hit so that crashed them. That made them completely halt um, all operations right away. Yeah. Anyway, what else we got to talk about? Um, I think back to the baseball real quick. Um, I yeah. was I had mentioned something about TV rights, but I don't think I touched on that when we were talking about it. Um, so I, I was listening to a, uh, media, a sports media podcast and, uh, they were saying, um, that not only, um, ESPN, Turner sports and Fox, those are the main national networks that carry games, but there's also going to be Apple is going to stream games. Um, exclusive and NBC in their streaming service uh, called um, Peacock. They're gonna um, they're gonna stream games. You know, uh, weekly. Even you had uh, Nickelodeon there streaming the NFL for at one point. I don't have a problem with these places doing that, but don't show. The same. Don't show the same feed on all the stations. Show me a mm -hmm. different part of the game where something. Show me something that's not narrated. Show me something yeah. where I can just watch the game. You know, watch the feed of the game, and not hear some yokel. I know we're on the fifty-two yard line, and as well, you know, and uh, the 
I favor the I favor the other team. So the other team, I I think they need to take and in order to win this game, they need to take and get their get their ball down to the down to the end zone, and uh, uh, that in the yeah. narration of football is just the thing that drives me. It's nails on a chalkboard to me. I I uh, you have two these, point. I agree. You have these flipping jocks like. Uh, uh, Mr. Joe. Uh, oh, yeah. Don't say his last name, Mr. Joe. Yeah. And uh, some of these other, um, uh, and you can, you know, there was another one by the name of Bob that those, they didn't care about any team but their own, and and they they took and talked about it that way. I'm not mm-hmm. here to listen to who your favorite team is. I'm here to listen to my football team win win or or uh, lose the game. I don't mm-hmm. care about you, your, the, your unless it's your local feeling. broadcast. Exactly, and, and, and they're going to talk about my team anyway. Yeah, well, that 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 stuff just that's another peeve of mine. It'll be really interesting to see when it comes to the Browns, though, who they bring on uh, to be their uh, analyst for I'll, the radio. I'll tell you who was. Uh, who I'd like to see. There's two two candidates. I'd like to see either uh, Joe Thomas or the other guy that's really pretty good at that, and he's an old neighbor of mine, and that's Jeff Phelps. I think Jeff Phelps does pretty pretty decent. He could probably do pretty well with it. Uh, I would think he'd be more of a play-by-play guy because usually the analyst is a former player. Yeah, well, Joe Thomas would probably fill the bill there. I think that's it, that's who I. But will he be to willing over. to? Would he be willing to leave NFL Network to do that? I understand he's already talking about it. Uh, I've heard he might do. He might do what Brad Doherty. I don't know if you ever watch Cavs, but Brad Doherty um, does like a few games. He's done a few games this season, but uh, he's not the full-time uh, analyst. Like Joe Thomas might do a couple, like games if the Browns are on the West Coast. But I'll tell you the one might... I don't think there would be a much, of, and I've heard him do the the color analyst before, and that's Bernie. I just don't, no. I just don't see that happening. How about Tim Couch? He already does color analyst in the preseason. It'd be all right, I guess. I never really listened to him, but my pick would probably be Joe Thomas. I think he's he'd make a pretty good play-by-play guy or a, uh, or a an- analyst. Color analyst, yeah. I think uh, Andrew Hawkins, who also played for the Browns for a short time, he'd be really good too. And I think he did a preseason game last year, too. We're going to miss Mr. Deacon. Oh, yeah, we will. The, there's nobody that'll be as good as Deacon. I actually met him once. It was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I, anyway. I wish the, uh, what, the Cleveland baseball team would do that with their radio um booth where they have a former player join the booth because they only have Tom Hamilton and that other guy who probably never played baseball in his life but um, he's not that great but they used to have uh, Mike Hegan who I think was a first baseman for a while then he got sick and ended up passing away, and they never replaced him. Yeah. But I wish they would bring in a former player to be an analyst on the radio. Yep. And maybe a better uh, analyst on TV, because I don't, I'm not a fan of the current analyst uh, for Indians games. Not yeah. going to say his name. But... 
I'm not a fan of him at all. He seems kind of arrogant. Yeah, that people don't buy arrogance. No. Anyway, why don't we wrap this up unless you got something else here? Uh, no, I don't. We got, but, uh, uh, we got 10, thank- minute, 10 minutes to, to uh, young Sheldon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me just see if there's any more news as we're wrapping up just to kind of throw out there that we might um, want to spend like two or three minutes on. Eh, no. Okay. We'll wrap up for this week. Thank you for listening. Um, if you're listening to us uh, later um, on Amazon Music Speaker Spotify, thank you. Um, or iHeartRadio, which I think I just forgot. But if you're listening anywhere um, of those platforms, thank you for listening. And uh, let us know that you're, um, you've are you listened, whether it's contacting us via Instagram, Buckeye Time, uh, Facebook, uh, Crooked River Radio, or I don't know if you would want to give the email out on the air and have them email. But you can um, email opposites at uh, office at crookedriverradio.com. That'll get, to, that'll get emailed to me. If you're uh, also, uh, man, just poof. <laughs> Don't ever get old. I had a whole train of thought and it just derailed. Uh, uh, if you're interested in, I don't know, that's where you <laughs> left off. Uh, anyway, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. We will uh, see everybody next week. I'll be able to see out of both eyes by then. And uh, I got a uh, another cataract being removed tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. So hopefully the results from that I'll actually be able to see again. Anyway, we're going to wrap it up. We will see everybody next See quick everybody pro- next week. Quick promos, because you know I like to do that before the end of every show. Uh, sun, or Saturday, Four Guys on Sports. This Probably week, noon to one. Yes, thank you. Uh, <laughs> radioactive. Um, seven to nine. From seven to nine, thank you, because my brain is dead, apparently. And then... Um, Sunday, Sunday, <laughs> well, according to, yeah, the radioactive is Sunday, seven to nine, and then world according to Elmer, seven to eight Tuesday, with yeah. Jerry and Pat. Yep, that'll work. Y'all have okay. a good week, and have we a good will, one. We will see you, uh, see see you sometime in the next week. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs>